Hello folks, my name is David Edgar, I'm the host of Heart and Hand and I'm joining you today after Alfredo Morelos delivered the Christmas present that every Rangers fan wanted with his two goals getting his three points at St Johnston today and uh, I don't know about you but I'm knackered after just watching that we really went through the ringer on that one and cards on the table, it wasn't a great performance especially in the first half, actually could have been as bad as... Rangers have played uh, away from home this season, but, uh, oh man, uh, I'd rather play badly and win than play well and not win, like we did at Easter Road on on Wednesday night. But uh, yeah, a, a hugely dramatic turnaround for Rangers because it's big. We haven't done that this season. We haven't gone and, and played well and dug out results in tough situations from a goal down. And I think we all... Let's be honest, in our heart of hearts probably felt when it went to 1-0 to St Johnston right on half time that we were going to struggle to score two because we hadn't looked creative at all. The team when it lined up today, injuries and, and fitness start to bite. The midfield was very functional. Uh, Andy Halliday, Lasana Koulibaly and Ross McCrory, who all of their strengths, and uh, certainly in the case of McCrory and, and Halliday, have been playing quite well recently, but they're not those creative midfielders that, that might you know, get you the get you the, the extra 10, 20% that you need. Uh, Andy Hardy should have scored early on, actually. James Tavernier with a great ball across, but I don't think Andy expected to get to it and ended up just sclaffing it well wide of the post. And that really was the best that Rangers created in the first half, apart from a long-range shot from uh, young Ross McCrory and a, a bit of a stramash after Lassa, uh, Lasana Koulibaly carried the ball in at the box. We, we didn't do enough. Uh, we're probably getting to the what does Eros Grejda actually do stage of the conversation. Um, we want to give him a bit more time, but he really should be showing more signs of it now. And he ended up getting hooked at half time for Glenn Middleton. And unsurprisingly, big blow to Rangers though, when uh, his Osisek companion, Borna Barisic, went off with what the manager called a bad one. And that led to the return of the lesser-spotted Lee Wallace uh, back from Siberia to, to take his place in the Rangers team. I like Lee Wallace. I'm a fan. You know, I know everybody's got their own thoughts on certain things, but putting all that shit aside, all I felt was that he hadn't played for two years and that's a lot to ask somebody in their 30s to come back in and look fresh straight away. And in all fairness, he didn't and uh, was, along with a couple of others, responsible for the St. Johnson opening goal. He he tucked in too far at the back post, allowing uh, their, their player Kennedy, who looks a good player, incidentally, a young lad, uh, he cut inside, sold both Lee Wallace and Andy Halliday with, with a, a check into, uh, into the middle and then smashed it high into the roof of the net past Alan McGregor. And at that point, we were struggling badly and you, you just didn't know where a goal was going to come from. As I say, Glenn Middleton came on, but Rangers were doing what we've seen far too many times this season, which is get ball down, get wide, cross into box. And St. Johnson had the better chances in the first half. Uh, Liam Craig's missed a sitter, a header from about a yard out. Rangers have, uh, then put on Kyle Lafferty for Lasana Koulibaly and went 4-4-2. Uh, St. Johnson went 4-4-2. It was very much a return to the time when this strip was the was the first team strip um, at Rangers. And people are going to tell me Rangers played 3-5-2 that season, aren't they? Yeah, uh, I walked into that one. But, uh, yeah, Rangers did start to play a lot better. Kyle Lafferty can't buy a goal at the moment and he's missed two decent chances. One I thought he was really unlucky with. Um, because he did really well just to keep it down and get it on target and the keeper made a good save. The other one he probably should have scored where it's been cleared off the line. If he'd got better contact, it would have went in. But everything else he did was great. Um, he was winning headers, his link-up play was good. And Alfredo Morelos, who normally reacts to the presence of another, uh, another striker playing up front with him, the way that you or I would react to a paedophile joining us for Christmas dinner. But today he was uh, a lot more willing to link up with Kyle and it was great to watch. And Morelos is just so good. And look, every club will be biased and every club will have their own favourite. But for me, he's the best player in Scotland at the moment. Uh, he's just so good. He's 22. And a friend of mine actually pointed out, he said, you know, David, have, have we had... Uh, a better striker than that at that age in the last what 20 years and not at that age we haven't no he's a tremendous player he really is and he's getting better and better and he's got melons and that's the thing when you need your big players to turn up Alfie does and he did it today uh, a great bit of play from Rangers Connor Goldson for once Rangers played the ball quickly direct and incisively he fires it out to Glenn Middleton he puts over a perfect cross right into the middle of the six yard box keeper can't come for it Alfie arrives textbook header down low into the corner 
one one, and then Rangers were the better side. That's not to say Saint Johnston weren't weren't uh, useful in the break. Again, my pet hate uh, a a free kick to Rangers broke off the wall. Saint Johnston run. Nobody has a sense to to take one for the team. Pick up the yellow card, and it ends with Blair Alston putting a header just over the bar, and. We haven't scored late winners, so I did worry, I think we all did, that maybe it was going to be two points dropped, but um, James Tavernier, again, showing how useful he is to the team in the tank sense, puts over a great cross, but it's all about Alfie, it's all about Alfredo Morelos, as he goes past his defender and smashes it in on the volley, great finish, so difficult as well, and the place goes mental, and a pet hate of mine is when the rather joyless citizenry of Scottish football complain because some of our fans, uh, who may be full of the festive spirit, uh, ran onto the track, St Johnson's official Twitter rather laughably called it a pitch invasion, that is not a pitch invasion when a few people stumble onto the track to hug their players, um, People getting excited about a last minute winner at the football that they've paid, you know, what, 40 quid for a ticket, 30, 40 quid for a ticket and travelled to Perth to watch two days before Christmas. Imagine, imagine the gall of these people being excited. How dare they? I'm sure a, a, a letter to the local MSP will, will put an end to such shenanigans. You know, bugger off. It's a big goal for Rangers. It might prove to be nothing, but it could prove to be absolutely huge. And people celebrating it. Nah, come on. It's, it's things like that that make Rangers fans think that it doesn't matter what we do. Um, I think if we sent a cheque to UNICEF this Christmas, you lot would complain about uh, the the font on the cheque. So, yeah, um, Rangers get the victory. Stephen Gerrard wasn't best pleased um, with the, the performance afterwards, but I think he'll look back and say it was all about getting three points. And as for Alfredo, um, the wee man is sex. Just absolutely wonderful we all love him to bits and what's brilliant is Rangers fans especially the youngsters we haven't had a lot of heroes the last few years and my nephew who's 10 is now running about with his Alfredo haircut the doors on that's who he wants to be in the, the, the playground It's it's been a long time since that's happened for kids of that generation so let's celebrate the wee man while we've got him um, he'll be away at some point but let's hope that's, uh, that's uh, a good bit away at the moment thank you very much for joining me and thank you very much for for listening to me and all these, there's thousands of you do, which blows my mind and I do appreciate it, which is why I always try and make sure um, that I do these even after the unfortunately still too regular times when Rangers haven't quite uh, managed to send me here as happy as I am doing this today. But I do appreciate it. You're wonderful people. Thank you so much. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. I'll be at Ibrox and Boxing Day as I think a lot of you will be and I'll talk to you again after that one. Until then, hope Santa's good to you and I'll see you on Boxing Day. Cheers. Bye.